Hello again, a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Denny K. Welcome back to my Springbank month. Springbank 18 year old here with me today. Now, if you've joined me for my last couple of videos, you will know that I have deemed April 2023 as my Springbank month. Very simple reason for it. I have a big bunch of Springbank that I'd like to sit down and work through. I'd like to do it all in this month, which means the videos will be coming thick and fast. So now, is a perfect time to subscribe if you'd love spring bank as i've said in my previous videos i've got plenty of core range coming i've done some long row i'll do some older long row i'll do some very 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 old spring bank as well so something for everyone today it is the 18 year old part of the core range the 2021 bottling which means that it is 50 percent sherry 50 percent bourbon yes that does change from year to year, right? Some previous, you've seen 100% bourbon, for example, very, very, very different whiskey. And even if you haven't experienced that in this, maybe you have with a 12 year old cast strength because that is also much the same. If you go back to the older black labels, you would find a lot of those, right? 100% sherry, then we saw a mixture with a different percentage, cast types, bourbon, sherry, for example, and then we've even seen some that are 100% bourbon. Very, very quickly, you can determine what your preference is. This one here, as I said, is a 50-50 combination. Now, let's get through smell, taste, overall experience, my thoughts on this, give it a score. There are a couple of things that I do want to talk about at the end. Some questions that I've asked, um, we'll keep that to then. So, you can stick around for that. We'll go through this whiskey first on the nose. Okay, we start with a little bit of peats, heaps of chocolate, heaps of toffee, some citrus fruit there. The citrus fruit is some tangelo and also some lemon rind, a little bit funky, a touch of spice, minerality. When I say minerality, what do I mean? I mean crushed rocks, a handful of pebbles. That's what it smells like. It's almost like, I don't know if anyone does this, but if you pick up, you know, you not shells, but pebbles at the beach or something along those lines. That's the kind of vibe that I'm talking about. It's not one of my favorite pastimes, but I'm just trying to put a bit of a picture here for you if you get me. But heaps of chocolate, heaps of treacle. The underlying smoke is absolutely perfect on it. Some banana on the nose as well. So there is plenty going on. That's damn good whiskey. Now I didn't say it was 40%, 46%, sorry. ABV, natural color, non-chill filtered, all these things that we already know about spring bank. That is very, very Moorish. Now, we did mention on the nose, some smoke, that peak, yes, that's here. Heaps, heaps of milk, chocolate, a little bit of dark chocolate in this as well. No banana, the citrus, absolutely there, orange, Lemon, the minerality I mentioned, exactly the same. There is some bitterness here. There is some spice here as well, especially as we come through to the finish. As we come through to the finish, there's a little bit more of the spice, but then we're getting a big whack of vanilla, heaps of treacle. Yes, absolutely. Plenty of chocolate on the finish here as well. It is a fantastic whiskey. Now, Before I go through my overall thoughts, I did want to talk about a couple of things. I get asked a question so often, is the trade-up, and I probably should have pulled the bottle over here, but anyway, the 10-year-old, the Springbank 10-year-old, is the trade-up from a Springbank 10-year-old worth it to the 18-year-old? Because we are talking two, three, maybe even four times the price, depending on where you are in the world. The 10-year-old is so good for the price. It is a different experience, especially depending on the cask makeup. In my opinion, I would rather have three or four 10 year olds, even though I think that the 18 is absolutely perfect. When we talk the 18, we are talking about, I think something that I wouldn't just sit there on a Wednesday night and sip a handful of drams like maybe you would with a 10 year old. The 10 year old just goes down so easy. It is such a dependable dram. But the price on this has really started to jump over the last couple of years, right? I'm seeing bottles of this fetch half a thousand dollars. It's 
got a little bit of money. It's a fantastic whiskey, and I'll go through the score in a moment because it really is such a great whiskey, but the price is really starting to creep. This one comes with a tube. So then the other thing that I guess people ask, Springbank boxes, you know, let's say the 10 year old, for example, you don't get that in a box anymore. Now it comes wrapped in like a tissue paper, right? So I don't know if Springbank have actually come out and said, well, the reason for that is X, but I know that post COVID, it has been a little bit difficult for businesses to be able to get consistent supply of boxes. So a very simple thing to ensure that you don't have to delay your release or your product going out is to quite simply not have it coming out in a box. Also, effective way of cutting some costs. Now, wishful thinking, you'd say, well, I hope then that maybe one you know, price uh, increase is delayed because there are some cost savings in not having a box anymore. Um, you know, as I said, that's probably some wishful thinking, but that does help. And I think that it probably is post COVID, probably just that, because I know that it's been a little bit hard for some, um, not just whiskey, but brandy, vodka, whatever producers to be able to get bottles, boxes, even out of boxes. And I know that a lot of people are saying that's because Amazon worldwide get a lot of those out of crate boxes coming their way. Anyway, I know that I'm getting sidetracked. I don't want to get sidetracked. This one has a tube. Yes, it does. What will I do with a tube once, once my bottles of whiskey are done and I have tubes? I will put them aside so I can put um, corks in them. So that way if a cork breaks, I've got corks. They might be used as something that my kids will create a spaceship out of or put pencils in or something along those lines. Or they quite simply just go in their recycling bin. What this is destined for. Anyway, the score on this, nine out of 10. It's that good. It is a very, very good batch. I will say that some of them have been a little bit maybe Not inconsistent, but not as high scoring for me. The bourbon cast that came out a few years ago, 100% bourbon, probably didn't hit the mark for me as much as something like this does. I think that that dank funkiness, a little bit of peat, the fruit, dried apricots coming through now as well. Yes, dried apricots, a touch of coffee with that chocolate, absolutely fantastic. There's just so much going on in this. And it's one that you can sit down, you can spend a lot of time with. Speaking of a lot of time, I try to keep these rather short and sharp. That is all for me for today. But as usual, I really do appreciate the time that you've taken to watch the video. So thank you very much. Hit the subscribe button. That way you can join me again next time. I'm thinking I might go with a long row 21, maybe 12 car strength. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, cheers to you.